got kind of a neat tool to show you today. A cable tracker, open and short finder. This is from VDIAG Tool. Uh, full disclosure, they sent it to me and asked me to do a review on it. These are kind of neat. I, don't, I actually never had one. There's been actually a few times where I kind of wish I did. You can use it to trace wires. You can use it to find where there's a break in a wire. All kinds of, you can test for continuity. This can make some wire testing uh, and, and diagnosis much, much simpler. I'll just kind of show you how it works, kind of give you a general principles of how these tools work and show you on the bench here. And then uh, we'll talk about the tool itself and some of the good and bad. Let's dive in. Let's unbox this, start with, see what we're working with. From six to 42 volt DC, so it looks like DC only. Can detect short circuit, open circuit, you can trace wires has two tones, a seven inch probe, I assume that's what this is, adjustable sensitivity, runs on a nine volt battery, and I believe the battery is included. We'll see, uh, no, it says not included. All right, I guess we gotta find a nine volt. It would be nice if it included the battery. I'll say that. So, this is your transmitter. It does include a battery. It says it's not included, but it is, so, it either does include a battery or this was a return and somebody forgot to take the battery out. <laughs> Maybe the battery door does not want to, there it goes. And that also has a battery. So it actually runs on two nine volt batteries, one for each side. They did come with a battery. There were batteries in it, but the battery in this was dead. This was actually switched on and in the package. So I don't know if somebody had this before me, this was a return or if it somehow got bumped but the battery was dead. So I just replaced the battery and it works fine. The one in here was fine. This was turned off. We'll talk a little bit about how these work. So you can do, let me talk, this can set this aside for a second. You can just test for continuity. So you flip the switch down and you have you know, a long wire, let's say. And you're just gonna hook these to one end of the wire or to a circuit, like to a fuse link or a fuse itself even, something like that. And then you get a green light. I think it's when it's under 10,000 ohms. Uh, you can do this with a regular multimeter. Um, you don't need one of these to do continuity testing. So let's flip it back to tone. This is the one that has, for me, that has the biggest value is uh, when you have a wire that you're trying to trace. So where does it go? Where does it end? You can hook one end of this. doesn't matter which one. So this is, you know, you don't need power. This is, this is self-powered. It's got a nine volt battery in it. So it's going to generate a tone out through that wire. This receiver and this antenna picks up that tone. To hear how you still have that beeping sound. So that's sending that tone throughout that circuit. You can trace a wire. So this will work through, certainly through wire loom, through carpet, plastic. So you can be tracing, let's say you've got a rear speaker or tail light or something that's not working right. And you can um, trace that wire back all the way through the vehicle, run along the floor or the ceiling, wherever the wire is, you can find where that wire runs and then trace it all the way through to its destination, wherever that is, where it'd be like behind the, like a speaker, maybe behind the radio, or maybe up to the front uh, in the engine compartment or wiring harness. And then you, know, you can find out where, where those wires go. The other thing it will do is it'll find a break. So if you know where the wire goes, you follow, you follow the path and you're trying now to detect if it's broken somewhere, then it will do that too because the tone will stop. So you can see like this is just to simulate a break. This is the end of the wire. This is the beginning. So you've got good tone here. And then you lose the tone. You get tone back and you lose the tone. Now you can, I don't know if you can hear it, it's a real faint, still beeping, it's picking it up from here. So there is a sensitivity dial on the side that you can turn it up or down. And that will, it's really kind of a, as much a volume control as it is anything else. This will work through other, other materials. So let's say you have a speaker that's not working and a speaker that is working. So you can use the, the known good circuit to hook this up to one end of the wire, trace the wire in your vehicle. So now you know where the wire goes. 
Then go back to the bad circuit, or what you think might be a bad circuit, and do the same trace, because the wires are gonna run together through, through a wiring loom. They're not gonna run one wire on this side of the car and one wire on this side of the car. They tend to run them together. So now you can start to trace where that wire, where you know that wire goes, and when you hear that tone stop, you know that's about where your brake is. Usually once you get to that point, it's a cut wire or uh, a brake at a wiring, at a, at a harness, at a plug, the wire, the, the pins come out or something like that. That's, once you find kind of generally where your brake is, usually it's fairly easy to identify once you can dig into it. It's finding where it is in that whole sea of wiring and sea of engine compartment and behind all the plastic interior, identifying even proximity where things might be going haywire. If you're trying to find what wire is the circuit, like everything is known to be good, you just don't wish which wire is which. Like, you know, you can have, if you've, if you've ever worked on a car that I've ever worked on before, where you've got like every wire is either red or black, but not because it's supposed to be red or black. <laughs> it's just because that's the wire you had in your drawer. You can't necessarily trust the color means anything and you open up this wiring harness and there's like seven red wires in there. Which one's the red wire from my beginning? This can tell you that too. You send that tone through that wire and you got a whole bundle at the end and you can find out which one's which. Let's just say, here, we'll put a bunch of wire together. Hypothetically, this end you've got one red wire at this end of the car. But at this end of the car, you've got three of them. Which one's the right one? You got tone at this end of the red wire. Now you're this end of the car. Which red wire is that one? It's not that one. Probably not that one, it's getting a little louder. There it is, that's the one, right? So you can identify your circuit. Now, as far as the features itself, there's a bunch of companies that make these. Um, Harbor Freight had one for a long time. Sentec, I think it was called. I don't remember the brand exactly, but um, they all look the same. They all have a transmitter very similar to this with two, with two leads and a receiver just like this. And uh, they all do the same thing. Uh, a couple things I wish was, uh, and this one, I don't know if they all have this. This one has a jack on the bottom, which you can hook some headphones up to. So the beeping, that tone generation is in your ears and not out loud. Sometimes that, like if you're in a busy shop, people are grinding and welding and cars are driving around. It can be hard to hear that tone sometimes. So putting some headphones on might make it a little easier. One of the things I wish for the continuity side, look kind of like a multimeter does, like it would beep or buzz or something, not just a green light. That can be if this got stuck upside down. You're trying to hold wires and trying to finagle this just so you can see that light. It would be nice if you could just touch them together and get, get a tone of some sort, buzzing or beeping. None of them have that. They're all like this. So this is not a critique of, of VDIG's, VDIG tools particular uh, model. Just something I wish was true about these. Uh, it's pretty robust. I actually did drop this a couple times by accident and so far it's held together. So that's good. Um, they're fairly simple. So, and they're fairly inexpensive. So this one's as good as any of the other ones. Nothing in particular about this one that I think is unique or special. So a couple areas like legit where, and not even hypothetical, just where I, this would have been handy was on one on the Firebird. When I cut that front end off the Firebird, you can see that link. I think it's going to be up here. When I cut that front end off and replaced it with the front end of the other donor car, I, I was cutting some of the mangled metal out of it and it, with a grinding wheel, with a cutting wheel. And I apparently nicked some wiring, but I didn't realize it in the little fuse harness that's in the engine compartment area. The wiring that I nicked was the wiring for the headlights, for the motors. After I got all back together, I couldn't get the motors to work. So I did some testing on the motors. Those seemed to test fine. There was some issues with the motors with their gear that I had to fix, but whatever, it wasn't an electrical problem. And I ended up uh, getting a replacement module because after doing some testing, I thought that the control module was bad. So I got a new control module. It still didn't work. And, and then I found it was working intermittently when I was finagling around with stuff. And I realized that I think it's a broken wire. So I just nicked it enough that when it got moved a certain way, the wire would open and lose connectivity and the windows or the, then the headlights wouldn't work. And move it back, it would touch and they would work. And a tool like this would have been really handy to go find that, where that break was. Cause it took me a while to figure out where that was. Even once I figured out, I think this is a wiring issue. Now I gotta find out where that wire goes. And now once I found it, cause it's all open in the engine compartment, it wasn't inside, you know, the car. 
but I still had to take apart a wiring loom and pull wires out by hand. And then I, once I pulled on it, I could see it broken. This would have been handy to find the spot exactly. A second instance where this would have been handy is years ago working on a trailer where I thought the lights had quit working. And it turned out it actually had, in the end, it turned out that it was actually not the trailer. It was my truck that wasn't working right. Uh, I had connected to another trailer that had caused a short and had melted a couple of wires. So the fuse was fine, some of the lights worked fine, but not all of the lights worked. And I was trying to troubleshoot the trailer because the trailer was old, it sat outside and it was a brand new truck. And I could have gone through and traced these with this and determined very quickly that the wiring in the trailer was fine and it wasn't the problem. I still did that, but it just took me a lot longer. This is one of those tools that for the most part is probably not going to be like a lifesaver tool. It's gonna be one of those that is gonna make a job much quicker. You're gonna more efficiently uh, get to the point. So especially if you do some of this stuff for a living, although if you do this stuff for a living, you're not probably watching my channel for this stuff. You already know about this. And you know, time is money, man. Even if you're not getting paid, what else could you be doing with that time? Thank you, VDIAG Tool for sending it to me. I appreciate it. I'm gonna put a link down below to it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little something. Maybe you wanna pick one up, put it in your toolbox. Could be handy. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time.